With a solid media career working for local and international media agencies, organizations and other groups, our next guest never imagined just how much his networks would rally and support him when he would need them the most. When you can't take another step, who is going to walk with you? Let's live out loud with Kevin Wachiro next. Hello and welcome to Sheila Lives Out Loud. So glad that you made time to spare a moment or two of your time with us. Remember to click subscribe to this channel, click on notifications so you never get to miss an episode. I'm Sheila Mwaniga and we're Living Out Loud at Westwood Hotel. Today it's all about Kevin Mwachero. Kevin, hi. Hello. I'm trying my best to be all professional and guest, interviewer, guest. Keep interviewer you're doing, well. you're doing well so far but i tell you the I'm truth the one who's like you oh. know, in, in majesty no <laughs> no kevin you know i've worked a journey with you and i've known you for so long when i first got my first radio job you were there i had absolutely no idea what i was doing and you were always there going it's okay you know and that's my first radio job so as well was but, it yeah why did you look so much more professional I'm like actor. i don't know what I'm happened to you. well i'm an actress too but i was <laughs> more like oh Help me, please, somebody. <laughs> yeah, see, you're the damsel, I was the prince. <laughs> <laughs> but that was at another time. Yeah. For anybody who's tuning in right now and watching the show and has absolutely no idea who Kevin is, just tell us a little bit about you. I don't like talking about myself. Um, that's for one. But, uh, yeah, Kevin, I call myself a storyteller, uh, a communications practitioner, um, Love of life, love of people, um, fitness, fitness freak when we're back at it. Mm -hmm. I love running, I love traveling, I love meeting people, I love reading. Oh, I'm a writer as well. Yes, you are. Um, I keep on forgetting that. Aspiring poet, <laughs> activist. Um, so all many things. Okay, bag of chips. so many things, Kevin. Yes. But Just you a know few what? things. As Who I say in Kenya, I'm trying. I, say I'm try <laughs> I love that. I don't love that expression. I'm trying. Niko Jerry put you. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> no, but there's so many hats that you wear. But yeah, the reason why. <laughs> You're Sorry. Uh -huh. No, but listen, there's so many hats that you wear when you are not wearing the hats. Literally, the roles that you play, you're also son, your brother, your friend. And a little while ago, I was talking about networks. You've had a fantastic career and it's still exploding. It's still growing. It's still morphing. You've worked with local media. You've worked with international media. You've had the opportunity to not just, you know, work for them in Kenya, but be based outside of the country and work there. Mm. And when I think about your own experiences as Kevin, it's... It's, it's a beautiful story. It started at Radio Africa Group and then it began to grow. So let's go back to the year Jeez. that we first got to meet oh, and then grow from there. I think it became very late and very later on, um, later on that I, had, I could, I liked being in, behind a microphone. I loved the studio um, and my passion was and still primarily is radio. Um, and but sort of education, a four four gets in the way, mm -hmm. you know, education system, and then you sort of have to have a proper career. And back then, you all we all had to have proper careers, yeah. and media wasn't um, an option for us. Yeah. There was only KBC then, so you start thinking, hey, you know. But in hindsight, I I love performance. I love being in front of the stage, uh, in front of people rather. I had a dry spell, I call, them, I call them the wandering years, where I worked at Carey for a few years. I wanted to go into public relations, it was media, communications, that, that I realized was my thing. Mm. But the universe thought otherwise. Um, I landed a gig at Radio Africa, at KISS 100. Thank you to Caroline Mutoko and Patrick Kwaku, who I, I, will, I will attribute. Shameless plug. No, but if it's it wasn't, if it wasn't for them. It's the same for me with yeah, Caroline. I wouldn't have absolutely. been if it, through it, all this if she know? hadn't just said, come, Yeah, try. It, it was that. It was, it was that and, 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 and helping me grow and to helping me live my dream and, and being in radio. And I was able to do that, not just at KISS. Mm. Um, and then going to Uganda to 
get into community radio and then going to school to study radio as well. And I think for me that was just, you say African, you know, this was, this was a, a huge milestone being able to study something that you love and to study it in a way that, that, that makes you grow. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. And to be with people who will make you grow. And I thrived. Mm -hmm. And then going to work for a community radio station in, in, in the UK and doing that for two and a half years, having a brief stint at the BBC, which I have every respect for and it was like my dream job, doing that. And these are new people you'd hear over the radio, over the internet. You're like, now these are your colleagues. You're flashing your badge at what was Bush House, like, hey, hey I work here. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, going to Bush House was like going to Disneyland. <laughs> I wouldn't cheat you. It's sort of the holy grail It was radio. the holy grail, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm a BBC member of staff, even though it was, it was a brief period. But it was that, being able to tell stories of the continent, which I love, being able to tell people stories, and then coming back to Kenya, and then going through another journey altogether, knowing my passion was still radio, and getting an opportunity to be exposed into news radio through the BBC, and doing that for a considerable time, and and being being behind the mic, then being ushered into TV, and you, you grow, but I wanted to grow more. Yeah. So I chose to leave the media, uh, mainstream media and, and, and venture into writing and communications for development, which is where I'm at. And that, in a nutshell, is, is, is the journey. Now, Kevin, we've talked about career and your growth. And, you know, your career is chapters unfolding, everything sitting together and all just going back to radio in one way or the other. Mm. Before we talk about what happens next in your path forward, I'd like us to now talk about something that happened to you. At the beginning, you described yourself as a fitness fanatic, which is true. This man has run an Ironman. No, I haven't done an Ironman. Not Man. yet? No, no, I, I attempted. I, run, I, I attempted an ultra marathon, but I haven't It done may it. as well just be an Ironman. No, no, no. In no. my books. I didn't finish. At so the very I least. I have the initials DNF, did not finish. Oh, yeah. but it's coming soon. Yes, inshallah. You're a man who's been very specific and in taking care of yourself, in living a clean lifestyle, in just you know, work, working with the treasure of the body that you've been given and nurturing it well. But then a couple of months ago, in fact, should I even say months, Kevin? Because it this is. story is yours. Yeah. Abu, can you begin to unpack? Uh, yeah. Because to be quite frank, as Let's your ask, friend, ask, yeah. as your friend, when I came to see you in hospital and you told me about the cancer, in many ways, I just sort of lost I lost faith in fitness. Does that make sense? There were people who said that. They were like, if Kevo can get cancer, what's the point it, of why exercising? Are we busy do Let's eat, binge, have nyama every day if this guy can get the cancer. Yeah. Who's, who's, who's safe, so to speak? Exactly. So let's go back to the beginning of the cancer story. You're living a fit life. You're doing great. Your career is blossoming. And then something stopped you in your tracks. Yes, minding my business, filing my nails. Looking <laughs> <birdies. laughs> Um Yeah. What happened? Cancer happened. How? How did you even know? Take us to when you knew you were in trouble. I still, I still, I still can't believe this is my story, and I'm still getting used to me telling it. Mm. Um, the trouble began in in in, uh, in April, while straining for this race, and I started getting lower back pain. Um, so I went to the physio, my Cairo, everything. And I, it just it just wasn't going away, and I couldn't. And, I, and I, one morning I just couldn't run, you know. And when I tried running, I just couldn't. So went to see the doc, went to see a doctor, did an MRI, and they found what they call was a, a hemangioma, um, an enlarged blood clot on my L5, which is one of the bones on the spine, on the lower spine. Um, they said, "Yeah, you're growing older. You've got an, you're, everything is fine. You're in shape." Blah 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 blah. And then I'm, I'm fast tracking it. Um, I found myself in hospital, you know, the night before I was spasming uncontrollably. <laughs> I was blinking and I would spasm, you know, it was, I was in so much pain, I was in so much pain. Went to the hospital, they found out that I had a fractured vertebrae. How did that even happen? And no one knows. Fast tracking now, this was in May, mm. um, fast tracking now to October, where I knew something was wrong. You know, I'd get pains in my body, my, my, my lower back, despite mm. you know, almost six, four months of not doing much physical activity. 
it's still, I'm like, can your bones take this long to heal? I even asked my doctor, it's what how? Up? What's yeah. up? And I remember, I, there was one time I got a sharp pain on my shoulder blade, like someone was drilling, had a drill and was literally on my shoulder blade. I'm like, what the hell? So I started describing this to him and he, he I was, I'd gone for a review and I was telling him all this. I'm like, ah, you guy, this thing's taking too long. Um, so I did a series of x-rays and MRIs. It's like, you do this. A few days later, I was, I'd, I'd gone to, soon after that, I'd gone to Uganda and he called me. He's like, where are you at? I'm like, I'm in Uganda, work. He's like, I need you back in Nairobi today. This was like at around one o'clock. Mm. And I asked him, is, why, what's happening? Why the urgency? Yeah, why the what? urgency? See, I come on Fridays, like, mm -hmm. no, I need you in Nairobi today in hospital. You know, you don't expect phone calls like that. No. You're like, is how? And he told me, I f don't exercise. That morning I was going to something just told me not to. I had to wear a corset before from June. It's like, do you have your corset? Yes, wear it now mm. and get to Nairobi. You know, and then I asked him, what's up? He's like, your images don't look great. It's one of two things. Yeah. Um, spinal TB or multiple myeloma. I'm like, multiple what is myeloma that? Like, is, what does is that who? mean? Whose friend yeah. is that? Whose friend? Yes. Yeah. Where I do they live? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Help me. Yeah. Um, and he's like, it's a blood cancer. And so it's one of those two things. So I remember... When I got that, I went to my room at the hotel and, and, and I called my friend and, and, and I cried. He was the first person and then when the doctor was telling me, I just, I think this was the journalist that kicked in, I asked for a piece of paper at the bar and I just wrote down everything that he said. Came, did an email to my family and told them, this is it, I'm coming to Nairobi tonight, picking a few things and I'm going straight to the hospital. It was so bizarre, I, I, I couldn't work that day, I went and told my bosses, me going to Nairobi, this is what they're thinking. That evening, I was admitted into the Aga Khan. They did lots of tests, keeping my fingers crossed it was spinal TB. Mm -hmm. A few days later, they discovered that it wasn't. So they said, we, you, tasted, you tested negative for spinal TB, mm -hmm. which would only mean one, one thing. One thing, the I other have cancer, option. Yeah. The other option. Just, and people say you accepted that very quickly. And I'm like, you have two options. Yeah, it can like, either be one of these two. Yeah, it's like being in, asking someone to marry. It's either yes, yes or, or no. no. Yes. You know, you don't, there's no maybe. Mm. There's no maybe there. You know, I'll marry you on Monday. You yeah. know, yeah. Was, so I think that, that process was going through my head. For the longest, I'd hoped it was spinal TB. For the longest, I'd hoped it was. I'm like, I hope this is it. Mm. And we had just come from burying my favorite aunt who had just died of cancer. So the family was, we had relatives who'd flown in. So the family was still in that mourning stage. This mm. was, I think, barely two weeks into her passing away. And then next thing, Kevo has cancer. Mm. You know, it, it was that. You're like, I'm trying to go back to that moment. It's like, okay. It was mm. almost like, Sawa, this is what you've thrown at me. Yeah. You know, okay. You know, and I think I accepted it a lot faster than everybody else. I'm like, what, what to do? And what I remember do you her. Do? And I, I felt guilty at one time that I had cancer. Mm. I felt guilty that I was putting the family through this. Mm. We just buried my Aunt Judy. And then all of a sudden, it's this. I felt guilty. You're like, I'm 43. I've got cancer. Where are the tombs going to come from? Mm. How can I go back to my folks' digs and start mm. depending on, 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 on people? You know? It was, it was that. I really wasn't worried about myself initially. And then I remember having a conversation with my mom, asking her, what were you telling people that I have? She said, oh, I'm telling people you've got a lower back. I'm like, that's not helping. Mm. In my head, in head, I didn't know. If we're gonna, we've had cases of cancer in our family. Just if we're gonna it. make any progress, we mm. might as well say it. Mm. I will, for, for lack of, this might, for some people might struggle this, but I will claim it and own it. This is, mm. this it is, is what this, it, it is. It is what it is. There's no pussyfooting around, mm. around it. Mm. Um, and I remember when they got a really good doctor and they were good people. Mm. And I think because I had good people ushering me into this. And I think in the process of being at the Aga Khan, they were really kind to me. I'd go for an MRI and someone's like, do you know why you're here? We're testing for growth. Someone, another test, we're testing for a lump. They were all very gentle with me and never used the same word. Mm. So in my head, like... <laughs> this is you guys, it's okay. It's okay. You can say it. You can say it. Say the same word. I may word. not want you to say it, but, but just say this it. is it. It's this okay. is it. But they were very. I remember one nurse actually when the doctor told me that it was, 
And they told me it was multiple myeloma. Mm -hmm. She just touched me and she felt it. And you're like, Oh, sorry. I've got to show you. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. This is what I have. Mm. Okay. I don't know why I'm even crying now because I'm, I'm through the worst, but I think this is the first time I've actually got through this mm. and just relived this that whole process. And you don't, because if you, you get me started and no, I'm just the worst. I'm just sweating, it's so hot now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin. But it, it is what it is, we can't, it is can't what it is. It. Can't and, change and that's what this journey is. Can't change you it. You can't change it. You say, can't change it. Continue with this story in part two.